You're about to listen to Pastor Bidimi Makmodi of the Well Oasis International. John chapter 14. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Verse number one. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Now, why did it begin like this? Of course, you know that when something begins, then you ought to go out back and look at the previous conversation. In the previous conversation, Jesus was telling them, I'm not going to be here with you always. I'm going to go. And Simon said, let me go with you. And he said, where I'm going, you can't go there now. He didn't say you can't go there forever. He just said, you can't go there now. And Simon said, why can't you just take me there now? Jesus said, you, that five minutes now, when they come, before cock crows, you'll be... But the point is this, that Peter sang, and Jesus was saying to him, you can't be singing and make it home. I will come and get you after. But you are not ready right now. Life is how you are prepared for home. Write it down. Life is how you are prepared for home. Because there is no space for for people to repent when they get home. There is no space for people to pray when they get home. There is no space for people to begin to make declarations where they got home. It's here in life that we do all of that. We repent, we fall again. You know all those things we do now. The epileptic lifestyle that we have. But when you get home, you are expected to be tried, tested and proven. So Peter was like, I want to go with you right now. Jesus said, I'm going. Very soon you won't see me again. I need to go. I want to go with you. He said, you can't come now. You're not ready. Number one, you're not ready because you've not been proven. Number two, you are not ready. Because when I leave, there's work for you to do here. Greater works than I have done, you shall do. If I take you home now, who does the work? This is the reason why when you get born again, nobody zaps you to heaven. They leave you here. You still are hungry like all of us, even though you are born again. You still will apply for jobs and not get them sometimes, even though you are born again. You still will marry and sometimes the marriage will fail, even though you are born again. Because all of those things make you really robust and ready in your spirit to do the work, even if it was just for one month or for 10 years before you go home. Praise Jesus. So you can understand why in chapter 14, verse number 1, it opened with, do not let your heart be troubled. Because if I have Jesus with me on a daily basis, we go everywhere together and I'm not making it. Where Jesus goes, how was the guarantee for me? I too don't want Jesus to go. Jesus, please don't go. Or at least if you are going, take me. Because me, I can't stand here. All the people have been doing Shakara I belong to Jesus, Satan. Leave me alone. Jesus, don't go, they go. Where Satan go show up? What should I do? Jesus, take me with you. <laughs> so my heart will be troubled too. So the disciples were troubled. Ha. Huh? We abandoned all to go with Jesus. Is that not what happened? They left everything. Some left even their boats that they were using to fish. They left their nets. They left everything, their livelihood. And they showed up. They said, we have found the Messiah. Then the Messiah is standing there and say, I didn't go. You didn't go where? (laughs) Now me and you. You are not going anywhere. Their hearts were troubled. But Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Just like someone is saying, my life was easier when I wasn't a Christian. Honestly, my life was easier when I wasn't a Christian. Everybody in the office already knew that we all take bribes together. So there was nobody, on top of the fact that I did not take bribes, they are persecuting me. They've decided that they won't. I know I heard a testimony, Sashalai were dead. It was last Saturday, last Saturday, that test, that place we went, that, that, that woman from Ogun State, where because she would not lie, where because she would not lie, she was a Christian, she was appointed something and she would not lie. The first thing they did was they took her official car. Then by the time they finished with her, by her hand, she wrote letter to retire. She said, I don't work 20 years and they go and not do it again. Do you understand it? So it's bad enough that I'm trying to be a Christian. My life is not easy being a Christian. I can't lie. I can't drive one way. All the things that people do in Lagos and we hail them and we clap for them. I cannot do them. The traffic still isn't moving. So exactly what have I gained? So you are saying to yourself, this is hard. Life is too hard being a Christian. When I was an unbeliever, we all did unbeliever things together. As a matter of fact, when there's a deal coming, they will call me. Because I have the brains and the fingers for it. But now they call me a bear, they call me sweat, but they call me mugu. They call me also. Nobody calls me for a deal anymore. My house rent is due. I'm praying. My children have been sent out of school. I am praying. Even ordinary headache. I can't buy paracetamol. I pray the thing go. I can't buy paracetamol. What is the point of being a Christian? My heart is troubled. Jesus is saying to you today, if you believe in God, 
try and extend that belief to me. At least you believe there is a God, don't you? So try and believe me too. Just believe me. What does it mean to believe me? Hear what I'm saying to you and take it to heart. In verse 2 it says, In my father's house, Alapo, in my father's house are many mansions. Only in the Bible will they call house and call mansions. What they should have said is, in my father's estate, there are many mansions. But he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. He says, if we're not so, I would not have told you. So I know life is hard now, but where we are going? The problem is, sometimes I think, when we get there, where they don't eat, they don't cook, they don't do, they don't shop, they don't go on vacation. What's the use? Give it to us here. But he said to him, he said, look, don't let your heart be troubled. He said, in my father's house, for my papa estate, you know, they build bungalow. Mansion, 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 mansion with a view area. Not try. Right. If you come there, you will lose for streets. You feel they look house like this, say, you go sleep, you don't go remember, say, that's time you stand. For my papa house, shy. Just try. Worry. Hallelujah. <laughs> Says, in my father's house are many mansions. If they were, if you were not so, I would have told you. And this is the thing that you must not miss. I go to prepare a place for you. As many as the mansions are, as fantastic as they look, that if you showed up there by yourself, you would not, you may be afraid to open the door and walk in. One of them has your name on it. And what I'm going to do, I, Jesus, I'm going there to prepare it. I want to make it ready for you. You can't come there and now see that something is out of sync. I need to go and make it ready. Allah brought me. Says in my father's house are many mansions. If there were no mansions in my father's house, trust me, you know I don't lie, I won't tell you. But there are. And I am going there right now to make sure that you get your place there. In verse number two, it says, and I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. He said, I'm not just going to prepare and then give you a sleep. And say when you go, when you turn left, you turn right, you go straight, you climb up, you come down. That's not what I'm, I will come by myself and I will carry you. We show up there together, me and you. So there's nothing like the gate man did not get the memo, he won't let you in. Because I'm going to be coming with you. I'm going to come back and I'm going to come and receive you. You are too important to show up at the mansion and no one is waiting for you. I am going to take you right there for you to get in. Now, I know this isn't physical, but it helps when you have this image in your head. So Jesus was saying, I know you're worried. I know you're not sure what tomorrow will bring. I know when you get to the office tomorrow, you can never be sure what they will say to you. But don't worry, in my father's house are many mansions. Whatever you lose here, I promise you, it will not compare to where I'm taking you. And in verse 4, he said, he says, whither I go, you know, and the way you know. This is the one that I like Thomas, praise Jesus. So let's spend some time to channel the Thomas in all of us. Today, we are bringing our doubting Thomas out. How many Thomases are in this room? Just raise your hand now before. With plenty. Praise Jesus. Anointing never kills the Thomas in us. He finds a way to rear his head. Very vocal and has no qualms to say, I don't believe. He's not pretentious like the church today. He said, Jesus, Jesus, I don't, that thing you said, I don't agree. Jesus says, see, where we are going, we know each other there. Even said, you know where we are going, where I'm going now. You even know the way there. There, Jesus. I don't even know where you go, not to talk of the roads. Talk another thing, I beg. Is this how you want to hear and I just bamboozle us and leave? What do you mean by I know the road? Did you tell me where we are going? Am I not hearing it for the first time? I don't know where you are going, so I don't know the road. Thomas was not like going to let Jesus go easy. If I came to that and I told you tomorrow will be alright. It will be worse in your mind. I was having a conversation this afternoon and she was like, I'd like to know the specifics of God's will for my life. And I'm like, I wish you can know all the specifics. You can't know all the specifics. So what you do is the revealed will flow with it. The concealed will trust God. She said, but it will just make things easier. I said, that's the point exactly. It cannot be that easy. In flowing with the concealed will that I don't know, I exercise my faith and trust in a God I've never seen. And that is the hallmark of our Christianity. So Thomas said me, I've never, I don't know the road, though. I've never seen you before. I don't, you've never told me before. I keep telling you, what do you mean? I don't know. Then Jesus said, this is verse number six. 
And as I'm thinking about it, my molecules are jumping. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You see, all the while we've been dealing with these I am speeches or declarations, we'll be dealing with one declaration. This one is three packed into one. For you to know how serious heaven is about taking you home. He says, I'm the way. I am the way. I am the chooser. I am taking you home. If you can follow me, I know the path. Just follow me. We are going home. I am the way. I am not a way. I am not one of the ways. I am the only way. If you will follow me, you can be sure you will arrive at your destination. It's like having a GPS that works. Even when you miss your way, if you have the sand, it will say to you, rerouting, Abby, or recalculating. There's nothing like, yeah, I've lost. He just begins to recalculate. And after a while, he says to you, in another 50 meters, turn right. It may take longer, but he's bringing you home. Because he's been set up to be able to bring you home. Jesus is better than, because Jesus can actually make sure that you don't drive past the exit that he asks you to drive past. He's better than the GPS. He said, I am the way. He's not that I will show you the way, he said. He said, I am the way. Just enter. That's why in the previous one we looked at was, I in you, you in me, together. If you are inside of me, I can I talk you where we are going. I am the way. He was saying effectively, no matter what is happening in the landscape of your life, I am the way. I am the way. I am not a way. I am the way. Hallelujah. We are the well. We want to continue this journey with you. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Well Reveals. Worship with us every Sunday at 7B Iche Chris on Yekulaje Street off Abikeani Maun Street, Lekki Phase 1 Lagos. Time, 4.30 p.m. We are the well, an oasis for revival, refreshing, and revealing. your heart and is making you have sleepless nights Jesus is the way that thing that you've been trying to make up for and has defied solution every time and all the strategies you've deployed have failed Jesus is the way the problem with us is that we come to church now and we forget that we came for Jesus a lot of us came to solve problems a lot of us came to network in church Every reason but why we should come to get in the way. Jesus is the way. He said, I am the No wonder he said to Thomas, you know the way, sir. Because Thomas has spent how many years with him in discipleship? Three years. So when he was saying, Thomas, you know the way, he wasn't talking. He wasn't trying to. It wasn't a proverb. Thomas actually knew the way. He says, I'm the way. I am the way. No matter where you find yourself in the landscape of life, God has a plan. I am the way. Jesus is the way, not because we are perfect, but because he is God's plan. Everyone needs to come to the way, regardless of your issues with obedience, regardless of what life's wind blows at you, regardless of how you choose to respond. Let it be clear that there is a place called home where it will all end. And Jesus is the way. Do I even need to say it again? He's not a way. He is the way. Jesus was saying when he declared I'm the way. He was saying my father had said I will bring you to a land. And I am saying that even if you feel alone today. And you are not certain that I'm still with you. This you can trust and is bankable. I am the way. You don't need to feel me to make it home with me. I do not need to speak with you to make it home with you. The thing you can trust is that I am the way. I will take you home because I'm committed like that. When Jesus said I'm the way, what he was saying was that this is beyond your behavior. I did not come for behavior modification because some of us think that's why Jesus came. And so the biggest testimonies we hear and we begin to clap with our feet is a testimony that says I went to prison. I was this, I was that. Then I went to prison for three years. Then I got born again in prison. Then I came out now and I've never been to prison again. We begin to laugh. That is not the testimony. Because somebody who was born in church, was raised in church, and one day decided not to attend Sunday school, is the same as the man who never 
stab into a church and went into armed robbery. So the testimony is never that my behavior changed. Jesus is not come for behavioral modification. That's not why he came. He did not come because you were bad. He came because you were dead. You need to know the difference. What he was saying was that I didn't come to change your behavior. Anything outside of me doesn't make you bad. It makes you dead. And there's, there are no levels to death. There's nothing like, is it 50% dead or 20% dead? If you are dead, you don't die. See you at the gates. Do you understand it? When Jesus said, I'm the way, he meant that I want you enough to take your hand and make sure I lead you home. Because the tendency is there are many ways that look like me. There are many ways that sound like me. That's why he was never going to entrust the work to say, okay, find your way home. He said, I will come back and I will receive you to myself. Because home is where I am. Praise Jesus. If Jesus had just stopped intervening in the intention that God would take us home by just saying I'm the way, I think we would have said praise Jesus. He's done so much for us, we cannot tell it all. But he didn't stop there. He went ahead and said, I am the truth. What does this even mean? Jesus was saying, if you ever doubt the plan of God, take another look at me. I, Jesus, I am proof that God has a plan for you. I am the visual aid of perfect love. If you see me on the cross, then you know that God loves you. When the devil tells you you are not loved, see me on the cross and remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I am the truth. Jesus did not say I speak the truth. In case you did not hear that conversation, he said I am the truth of your identity in Christ. I am the truth. What he was saying was, when they tell you you will be denied your right, look at Jesus. Just look at me and remember that he who freely gave his son up to die for me, shall he not freely give me all things. So there is nothing that is my right that man can deny me. Jesus is the truth. Every time I remember Jesus that I know that what has been said that will happen to me can happen because Jesus paid it all. Do you remember? Paid in full. When Jesus said I'm the truth, what he was saying was, when disease and sickness say you won't make it, look at me and remember that I bore your sins and your diseases. And by my stripes you were healed. So even sickness cannot deny the truth that Jesus walked the path already for me. When Jesus said, I am the truth, he was saying, says when they tell you that you are too weak and insignificant to make a difference, <laughs> then always, always, always remember that his strength is made perfect in your weakness. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Do you get it? This is the truth. What they say is just conversation they are having. When they say you will beg and borrow all the days of your life, remember that I am above only and never beneath. And by the way, even right now I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus far above principalities and power. How dare you tell me that this condition is who I am? There is a place called home. And you see the beautiful thing of a place called home is I can't go like this. I can't go broken. I can't go beggarly. I can't go weak. So what that means is that weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Why? Jesus is the way. And Jesus is the truth. If Jesus stopped at, I am the way, the truth. We will go home today and we will hold a party. Because no man has ever done this for us. But he didn't stop there. He capped it all. He said, I am the life. He says, I'm the life. He says, the very essence, I am that essence. The very essence, I am that essence. And because of that, I've come to give you life. And life more abundantly. The thief cometh but to steal, but to kill, and but to destroy. John chapter 10, verse number 10. That I have come to give you life, and life more abundantly. On top of that, I'm not just giving you life. I am the very life that I give you. 
That's why the communion table says, when you take this, so God said, my intention is I will take you home. Jesus said, how do we do that? So you know what? I will become the way. I will be the truth. And I will be the life. So therefore, no devil from the hell can deny you access to home. That's what it is. That is why for me it is bankable. You know when I, you say something is bankable, it means that this thing I'm telling you, go to the, even CBN would authorize it. The central bank of heaven has authorized this one. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is life. And because of that, you can be sure, Stashola, you will make it home. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that what Ugozi did for two months, I'm doing for two years. You see, <laughs> the thing I like about this journey home is they don't get there. It's not Nigerian schools. They don't do first, second, third. <laughs> when you reach out, you don't reach out. The only thing you hear when you get home is welcome. Good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. Whether I'm in first region, whether I do for reason, what does that matter? We are home. We are home. I will see you as a prof. You are here. Give me high five. Oh, hey, we made it home. Yes, we made it home. Ah, I am home. Do you know what happens at home? Say, so whatever you gather at home, moth cannot eat it. It cannot corrode. Chiefs can't carry them. I am home. I am home. I am home because Jesus is the way, is the truth, and is the life. It didn't matter that God said it 400 and, you know, because they were in Egypt for 430 years, right? By the time they were coming out of Egypt, the promise has been over 800 years. It didn't matter that it took 800 years. God still said to Moses, he said, don't worry. My thoughts towards you are of good, not of evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope and to bring you to an expected end. No matter how they do it, let them tie it on top of a palm tree. Let them send it and throw it in flowing water. <laughs> let them dig it. Dig something and tie it to a shigidi and plant it. They can't stop me from going home. They cannot stop you from going home. Why? Because the cry of home is planted deep inside of me. And like a compass, it will lead me to Jesus ultimately. And because of that, once like, once I get to Jesus, it is like a missile that has locked on his target. Uh -uh. He must deliver. That's why the Bible says, if a man be in Christ, He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things, bam, they've become new. I am home. I will take you home. I will take you home. You may not even recognize what home is like right now. But whether the devil likes it or not, we they go home. I didn't bother to tell you what to do to make it home. Because all this while we've been talking of what to do to make us get home. So there was no need to repeat ourselves. What I need you to never forget as you go out this week and for the rest of your life is that you are marked for home. And so there is nothing happening right now that negates the fact that you're going home. As long as you have Jesus, you will make it home. It is therefore safe right now for me to congratulate you in advance. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to Pastor Bidemi McMordy. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Well Reveals. We are The Well, an oasis for revival, refreshing, and revealing.